Hello folks, welcome to another episode of the Scottish Camping Show, joined as usual by myself, Ben, and my colleague, Lauren. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. I feel like we haven't sat in the mm. studio for a while. We got ahead and took some time out. We did. It was nice. But we still managed to get episodes up. So you may not have noticed our time out, but we had time out. Still busy. Um, behind we, the scenes Behind time the out. scenes busy, yeah. Mm. Um, before we jump into our topic for today, if you haven't already done so, uh, please subscribe to our channel via our YouTube uh, or our YouTube channel. Um, you can subscribe via your favorite podcast app and you can jump into the conversation on things that we talk about here or anything camping really at our Facebook group, which we've called Snowy's Camping Banter. Mm-hmm. Lots of people in there now, like-minded people talking about all things camping, hiking, full drive, camping and other related topics if you mm. want. Um, today's focus is a little more on hiking. Now we, we do a lot of camping stuff, not mm-hmm. as much hiking stuff, but we do sell a fair bit of hiking gear. And this is on the back of, uh, a regular listener, a regular viewer listener. I'm not sure. I think she's probably a viewer. She's got some of her own videos online. Um, on, a. And it's like when I, when you say regular, we also mean like OG as in from day one sort of thing Orig- as well. Original regular. Yeah. Original, yeah. Always regular. And, and Um, commenter and you know Mm -hmm. always in the Facebook group and lots of awesome um, ideas for uh, camping out of her van Mm -hmm. Uh, her name's Coralie and she suggested on the back of our last episode that we do and um, we talk a bit about hiking stoves yeah and I did when I saw her comment I was a bit like no we've already done that and then I had a look and I was like actually we haven't and it's like we've covered so much stuff over the last you know nearly three years it's really um yeah, sort of getting to the point where we can't really keep track of what we have or haven't done, <laughs> we look isn't back, it? Yeah. Well, we've also yeah. there's a lot of um, content that we've written on our blog as well. So I think yeah. we're now we're getting to a point where we've got video content, podcast content, and blog content. And, and if it's we all do just product reviews, like if I do reviews on a product in my mind, I'm like, hmm, have I also? Yeah. I must have covered that. Same, yeah. you know, we've talked about it somewhere. We've talked but about so, it somewhere, but, but anyway, and I think we've probably touched on this in lots of cooking uh, episodes, yeah. we said you can also use it for hiking, but this has got a hiking focus and it might have a little bit of uh, you can also use it for camping kind of Yes, because we did it. sort of cover, you know, compact stoves and things like that in our previous episode, which was a car camping one. Yeah. We talked about that for, you know, about five or so minutes. Um, so we're just expanding on that really. This goes even more compact to mm. not to fit into a small car but to fit into a backpack, so, mm. you know, palm size kind of stoves. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we will cover off on sort of multifunction. So some things that you might be able to use for both hiking and camping. There's always pros and cons. Um, mm. Either way, there's not one that perfectly suits both scenarios. Yeah, but you can I mean, I suppose you can. One. I'm already off on tangents, but I suppose <laughs> you can use anything for either if you want. It just depends how strong you are and how much you want to carry. And you like, it's well, only your own sort of personal limitations that. Well, if you use sort of, do you yeah, know what I mean? If you're using hiking stuff for camping, you're yeah. camping with small gear. If you're using yeah. camping stuff for hiking, you're hiking. It's not with like big you're carrying gear. a big cast iron Dutch oven, but a lot no, of there's sort some of boundaries. There's a lot of other things that you could take hiking if you really wanted to. Yeah, absolutely. I saw some guy once. This is just another tangent. I saw a guy once when I was out hiking on a multi day trip carrying one of those pop up Explore Planet Earth. Um, <laughs> what are they the called? Tents. Yeah, 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 what are they called? Tents. Speedy. Yep. And it's like this giant, I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen them, but they're like a giant circle, aren't they? They're yeah. like a metre circle and it's, you know, those pop-up tents and you can get those ensuite tents that yeah. drive people mad. Like we've actually had flick someone walk into the shop with theirs open and just thrown it on the <laughs> ground and just be like, up. can someone bloody pack this up for me? <laughs> <laughs> Nearly drowned myself on the banks of the Murray River yeah. trying to get this back in the bag. Anyway, and those in the that store sort of that thing. do it all the time, pick it up and then fold it up within a few seconds. And, and it's that, like, what are you just doing, just a bit of fuel on yeah, the fire because sure they're angry. Um, now we do have a blog post that we've kind of looked back on because mm. we constantly update our written content. We yep. pretty much, or you, you've done the artwork. I'm not going to claim all that for myself because you've sat down and sifted through all this. It's um, all right. We're a part come, of a team, Ben. I, I'm, I just rock up for the conversation. <laughs> <It's all good. laughs> you just here to look pretty. That's right. But those, all those articles are constantly refined over the years. Mm. So we kind of pulled that in and we thought, well, let's base it on, on, you know, the structure of this, this um, post here, yeah. Uh, this, um, yeah, sorry, blog post. And hopefully that'll prompt a bunch of other awesome content yeah. uh, through our listeners and viewers, and mm-hmm. we can jump into some more conversations, but let's, um, 
let's get started because uh, we've talked a lot and we've not gone far through our list here so far. Types of stoves. So standalone stoves we've started out with what? So By that we're meaning essentially just the burner. Yep. Um, because then you can also get the other type, which is like a cooking system, which oh, which is mean. like, um, like you know, you have your burner and some sort of integration with cookware as well. You can even potentially get some that also incorporate dining ware. Yeah. Um, so the very- but yeah, so it's like you, your standalone stove, which is just your burner, versus something that's more of a, a cooking system. Yep. So the classics in those are what um, the, the po- MSR Pocket Rocket is like an yep. institutional stove in that space, and there's also another one from um, uh, 360 degrees called the oh, Ferno stove, mm-hmm. which is a really uh, affordable, uh, really excellent yeah, value like, stove. I think it's like thirty bucks or something. Yeah, it's it's crazy. crazy. Um, it does yep. the job. Yeah, and then stove systems, as as you like mentioned, the jet boil um, jet flash boil. is probably the most. Yeah, so yeah. the burner is integrated into a system, and you're a little more limited around what you can cook in that. You kind of mm-hmm. need to um, cater what you're, the ingredients you're taking to how the stove system cooks. Yeah, but usually what you get out of a system like that is fast boil and yeah. really efficient use of gas. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And on gas, uh, two types of of gas or fuel, fuel. that we'll cover, liquid mm. fuel and gas, which we've yes. covered a fair bit on the hiking, um, uh, sorry, the camping topics with me liking my mm. common powerhouse dual fuel stove, which yep. runs on um, a shellite or unleaded fuel mm-hmm. um, versus in the camping realm, LPG canisters, but in the hiking realm it's uh, usually more compact like a, isobutane, a butane propane, propane blend. canisters. Yep. Yeah, yep. because as we've sort of talked about before, um, with things like your classic lunchbox stoves that use those butane canisters that you can get a pack of five for six bucks or whatever, um, that gas is really susceptible to um, low temperatures affecting efficiency. And so when you have a hiking stove, you have um, that butane mixed with propane, which gives it a nice little blend, which keeps that efficiency. And it's all even down to sort the, of, but even above snow line and things like that. Yeah, it's all down to the boil point of the, mm. the gas. The butane burns really efficiently in warm weather, but yeah. as soon as it's cold, it's no good. So. Yeah, and yeah. that's where that that mix comes in. And I think you can also find, um, y- you know, there's a range of different brands that that produce those. Lindel valve, I think they're B one A eight or Lindel valve canisters. It's a self sealing valve that you can yeah take yeah. the canister on and off. And that um, a range of different brands, and there are a range of different prices. And generally, the more higher end brands, say like MSR and Jetboil, their um, fuel mix has a higher percentage of propane, which mm-hmm. means that because generally those brands cater for more technical adventurers and people who are going above the snow line and going into cold places, um, they make sure that that their fuel blend is going to cover you for a range of different temperatures. Whereas if you go with something like Companion, for example, they do a cheaper um, canister of gas, which is higher in butane. It's still pretty much going to cover you for majority of um, situations and circumstances, but the percentage of that that fuel blend is the or the gas blend, mm. I should say, is just something to keep in. Most mind. of what you'll buy will be a seventy thirty blend. Yeah, um, but the higher, more high performing ones are an eighty twenty. Yeah, I've never been in such extreme environments with a gas stove that I've noticed the difference. Probably the bigger difference most people will find is a compact stove with a um, regulation gas regulator built into it Mm -hmm. so it doesn't require a certain pressure of the gas in order to operate well it can operate better on a um on a lower um, pressure coming out of the stove so those colder climates are going to work better with a regulator i may have jumped ahead a bit there yeah we Um, have so um we probably like we've talked about gas so we probably may as well just go with gas now because we've sort of gotten into that fuel mix a bit. Come, but Come back to the liquid fuel. Yeah, we will. Yep. Okay. Um, but it, so those canisters as well also come in a range of different sizes. So you can get like small 100 gram ones, I think 200 and something and two, 480 two, or something. 230 and 450 lines. I think, yeah. yeah. Yep. So um, depending on your trip or what you've got to pack it in, like some of those 100 gram canisters can fit inside pots and you can work out ways to integrate your canister within your whole cooking system as well. Yep. Um, they really came into play when, from memory when jet boil came in, which we've got one on the shelf behind, behind you. I don't know if mm. our viewers can see that, mm. um, but that 100 gram canister was 
sort of introduced to fit inside that and now it's just become a regular. Yeah. Um, and I think they are pretty handy um, to have a smaller canister, especially if you're only going away on a one or two night trip and you are considerate of your grams and you don't want to carry more fuel than necessary and things like that. Um, but I guess the potential downside of gas over liquid is that it's a lot harder to ascertain how much you've got left. And if you take a canister away and then you've still got can canisters left, I mean, you can get like jet boil, do a little, um, weighing gauge, gauge yeah. thing that you can, we've got a video on it and you can weigh your can and that can give you a rough idea of how much gas you've got left. But other than that, it's a little bit hit and miss. So you might end up having to take extra if you're not sure how much you've got in this canister anyway because you don't know if you'll go through mm. it enough or like fast enough. Or If you're a gram counter, I've I've played around with once again the liquid fuel, gas fuel for hiking previously um, and once again fallen for the liquid fuel side mm. of it as a preference. Um, mainly because with the gas side of it, while they're really easy to use and really affordable uh, or more affordable than most of the liquid counterparts, um, you can't judge how much is left mm. and most hikers will probably uh, be in the same boat in having canisters at home with a bit left in bit each left of in them. It, yeah. Because once that canister is empty, you've still got to pack the empty canister in your bag mm. and that's not doing anything for mm. you. And that might be less well under 100 grams. Yeah. But, um, Still, if you're getting into lightweight hiking, that's that's another chocolate bar or something. Yeah, I and I guess back, so. and I guess that also um, you made a good point there. It's like you pack it in, you pack it out. Whereas if you're using a liquid fuel stove, you generally would have a fuel um, storage vessel that mm -hmm. you just top up. Mm -hmm. Whereas you know you every time you're going through those canisters, the gas canisters, you're disposing of them. Yeah, ultimately, I mean Absolutely. they can be recycled and things like that, but. Um, now, obviously, the efficiency of your stove depends on a range of factors, like its consumption rate, its BTU. Um, you've also got like wind factor and all that sort of stuff. But realistically, a higher BTU is going to have a higher consumption rate of gas. So if you're looking at a stove that has a much higher BTU, you're going to be churning through a bit more gas than you would on one that is lower. Mm -hmm. But then it's a balance because a higher BTU is obviously going to be boiling water quicker and it's going to be a bit more efficient in that side of things. So it's trying to work out what the right balance of consumption versus time and things like that. Yep. Um, but that most you want to have. Most of them will have some sort of consumption rate written on it, which has often been a grams per hour, but now there's yeah. a uh, kilojoules per hour is, is what some of the standards are moving towards. Um, grams per hour is so much more functional in my opinion. It is, Because yeah. it come, you, your canister comes with a grams per hour. Yeah. Or like, a, sorry, not a grams per hour, but a gram. Yeah, but I wouldn't rely solely on that rating because there's different mm -hmm. factories that test or different testing places that test it. I've in the past to test mine, I've grabbed a canister mm -hmm. and tested in real world climates because it varies in temperature and, and wind and all those sort of things. Yeah. I'd weigh it before I cooked a meal. I'd do it in my backyard, right? I'm cooking a meal one night yeah. just in my hiking stove. Um, and then I'd cook a meal that I think I would cook on the trail. Yeah. Maybe boil some water for a cup of tea or whatever and work out. That's probably how much I'd use it in a day. And then I'd weigh the canister afterwards and I'd work out how many grams of gas I need mm. in real time mm. to cook approximately that much each day, then add yeah. a bit of a buffer. And then I could work out how much gas I needed to take for the trip. Yeah. Do the same thing with liquid fuel, but you're talking in like milliliters or liters, yeah. milliliters in a hiking realm rather than grams of gas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so – as we've sort of already mentioned, the uh, all-in-one systems, the gas versions of those are the jet boils. Um, you what well, you got flash and zip, I'm pretty sure, and they're both the same uh, burner. diameter yep. and the same like burner or flux ring, I think they call it potentially. No, it's Fl a burner shroud. F flux ring's what they refer yeah, to the as the little the zigzags around the side, yeah. yeah. Yep. So they have the same sort of burner shroud um, but a fl the flash is a taller flask whereas the zip is a, a smaller flask mm. but the same diameter. Yep. And then you've got your uh, mini mo, yep. which is one I've got, and the sumo, which is a much larger diameter. But again, the Sumo is a higher, taller flask and the Minimo is a shorter flask. Yeah, and the Minimo is a 
Minimo and the Mighty, Mighty Mo, I think. There's another – they're more of a bowl rather than a cup. So oh, the, the, the Flash su- and stuff the are more of a cup. And, the Sumo and the Mini – Mini Mo. Maybe the, the Sumo changed. I've got to check back on what yeah, the, where might, the, the Mighty is at the Mo is a single burner. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, but they it's a combination of cup style and bowl style. So if you want to cook yeah, more of a meal, like, the bowl style might suit you better. If you're just boiling water, the cup yeah. or the flash or the zip are probably a good option. Yeah, the Sumo is like massive. I think it's something crazy, a, like a litre and a half. It's yeah. huge. But it's like if you have um, – the mini mo, like if, if all you really want to be doing is boiling water for cups of tea, packets of soup, dehydrated meals, you know, the flash or zip, easy. What is boiled a liter in like a minute or something? It's ridiculous. Yep. Um, but if you're wanting to potentially do a little bit of cooking, not a crazy amount of cooking, but a little bit of cooking, uh, the mini mo is better because it's wider and it gives you a lot more room to like stir your food and mix it around and a bit more heat distribution on the base there. There's also a difference between, and I need to check back on the specs, but the flash from my understanding is an irregulated or is it regulator? I've got one behind us here. I don't think it's got a regulator in it, but the bigger pots have got a regulator, so you've got more flame control as yes, well. Yes, you do have a um, – the, the Minimo's got amazing zip control. Yeah, so there is a difference in some of the flash yeah. – in, in some of the jet boil models there as well. It's mm-hmm. – it's um, originally they bought out the fast boil thing. You can still cook pasta and rice in those. You just need to keep stirring it so it doesn't burn on the bottom. Yeah. And then they brought out this other range that they went, okay, we've added a bit more functionality for cooking here. Adds a bit of weight. Maybe it doesn't boil yeah. as quickly, but you can – now cook a meal quite And quickly, you can so. take your flask off and put in a little pot support thing which converts it into a hiking stove that you can use a skillet or an, a normal saucepan or things on. So yep. um, they're definitely not ones for the gram counters in the sense that if you're ultralight hiking, like they're heavy but they don't, but you have a lot of flexibility with them. Um, yeah. in the sense that even if you do remove the flask and you're just taking the the bottom burner shroud or whatever, it's still going to be a bit heavier than a normal hiking, uh, like a standalone yep. single burner hiking stove, but it does give you that flexibility. I think, and I reckon I've said this before on an episode, you've got to look at the weight, not just of the individual items, but also what you're cooking. Yeah. If you look at how you, you so the, the flash is good if you're happy to cook just that basic food, but if you're, if you weigh that up with the type of food that you're taking, yeah, um, you might find you're adding an extra pot or something to a certain stove in order to cook that food, which might push it up over the weight of something else that might do the job better. So look at your That's cooking really system true. as a whole, the stove, the pots, um, even the individual, not all in one systems. So you've got to add pots to those individual things. Yeah. So have a look at what type of food you like that to be cooking. Yeah. What you need to add to the entire system, including the food and the ingredients, and look at the total weight of all of that. Because even if you're, even if you're doing something like, um, you know, you've got the lightest stove on the market and the lightest pots on the market and the lightest, you know, whatever, um, and maybe you're dehydrating your own food, dehydrated food versus the freeze dried food like that you get, you know, that we call dehydrated food off the shelf or whatever is going to be still heavier. And so Mm. it really will, um, it really will sort of, like you said, it might it might actually come down to being quite close depending on yep. how you – And if you need more fuel yeah. for the lighter stove, that might count away a slightly heavier stove yeah, that burns more because it's sort of so less efficient. Have mm. a look at it as a whole system. Um, other versions of that, there's the MSR um, wind burner is a similar yes, thing to the – Yes, that's very similar um, to the jet boil, jet boil flash sort of thing. And there's a few other brands that have brought out their version of the jet boil as well, but jet boil is kind of the original mm. wind burner. The MSR, all the MSR stoves are awesome, but they're quite um, – they're top, top shelf in terms yeah. of price. The jet boil offers some really good options for just the general – general camper. Yeah. So um, you mentioned before the pocket rocket, but um, that comes in like a pocket rocket, I think. Is it pocket rocket two? And then there's a pocket rocket deluxe. Yeah. The deluxe is the, it's got a bigger burner and it's regulated. Mm-hmm. Pocket rocket two, I haven't had a good look at since they've updated it, but I'm thinking it's from the last one I looked at was just a more compact version of the original, yeah. which is just a three prong, three prong support, with the burner in the middle that if you buy it now, it's going to last you Forever. Yeah, forever because it's really yeah, yeah. well made, does the job, burns efficiently, mm-hmm. um, and it gives you a lot of versatile cooking options. Yeah. And they um, those sort of single burner things are a lot more compact as well because they do sort of fold all the, what do you call them, pot prongs or whatever, they Supports, fold in on yeah. themselves yep. and things like that. Um, 
and they're super lightweight, super compact. Generally, you can fit them inside. Then they're really a negligible thing to carry, aren't they? Really, but they are. As we mentioned before, you've got to add. Um, I'm just. Do you know the weight of the, the jet ball off the top of your head by, by any chance? Don't. With these, I should have come prepared, but I didn't. Right. These. Um, so these stoves, these standalone ones, are usually. 100 grams, sub 100 yeah, grams. Like We're talking 60, really, really light. Yeah. Whereas the uh, jet bore systems, uh, I'm just having a quick look at the MSR one here, which is about four to 500 grams for the total kit. Yeah. So you ne- then need to add a pot to these standalone stoves. Mm-hmm. Um, but the benefit is you can add a pot that you can use for multiple yeah. things. You can even eat out of it if you like. Um, so I like to carry like a stainless steel pot because mm-hmm. I can – Use that on the stove. I can also use it on a small fire if I want. I can scrub it. There's no, I'm not worried about nonstick surfaces and those yeah. sort of things. But I got to add that weight to the stove, which probably then pushes it up to sort of 200 grams, I suppose. For the, yeah, for the system. And yeah. I do find that they are a lot more susceptible to wind um, and having that heat just being drawn out of the food and drawn away mm. from the burner. Um, so being able to use them somewhere that's relatively sheltered is really good. But things like the Ferno cook set, you know, we talked about that super, you know, um, affordable mm-hmm. Ferno stove before. That comes in a little set with like a little miniature pot, two miniature pots, and you can yep. use them as cups. And in, you know what I mean? And yeah. that's like so small. It packs not that much bigger than a pair of Explorer socks, for example. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's great value versus hole. Yeah. Um, the, the other downside of a stove like this is it goes on top of a canister and if you're using a 450 gram canister, it's quite tall. Mm. If you've got a large pot on top of that, it becomes top heavy. So yeah, that's I reckon a you could easily well. sort of get 40 centimetres high sometimes. You could. So mm. you can counteract that by adding a pot support or a, a canister support on the bottom, but then mm. you're adding extra grams for that as well. So these are all yeah. little things that you need to have to think about. Yeah. Um, those so, that are uh, just on the, the wind protection, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, those upright ones are certainly more susceptible to wind and you might also need to add – a windshield or something that you can usually make that out in the field. Yeah. They do have little things on top of the burner. You'll notice the jet, um, sorry, not the jet, or the um, pocket rocket, getting my stoves mixed up now, has got like a little wire or, or a little sort of yeah. three-prong thing in the mm-hmm. middle. That does offer some wind protection. It's probably there more so to stop the flame from just blowing out. Yeah. You'll, you'll notice as you use it, one of those thirds might blow out and yeah. then light up again. So it just kind of keeps it alight, but it doesn't, protects the flame as such to keep the the heat on the bottom of the stove as much as a mm-hmm. an actual windshield. Yeah. So that might be something else you need to add to the weight, whereas a jet boil um, and the wind burners kind of integrate that into the system. Yeah, they do. So liquid fuel um, stoves. Now, when we say liquid fuel, you know, I guess much with the larger ones, although I don't know if the big big camp, car camping um stoves can use metho but when we're talking liquid fuel for hiking stoves it could be shellite could be unleaded petrol could be metho could be some sort of spirit right so they're like pretty versatile metho and shellite are the two common ones yeah um shellite being what you use in the the camping stove i talked about before the, the coleman powerhouse but i've also got Liquid fuel for my hiking setup. No surprises there. Mm-hmm. Um, with an old um, Whisper Light International, which is another like if if the pocket rocket the is Whisper the classic Light. in the in the gas realms, yeah. the Whisper Light International is the, the classic institutional version in the yes. liquid fuel uh, yeah. realms. Slightly heavier, but burns in any condition because you're controlling the pressure of gas in the bottle. Mm-hmm. Requires a bit more maintenance. It's a bit smellier. It's, blackens up a little bit more, a bit more mucking around, but I quite like the, the process mm. of, of lighting it. Once again, it's a, just one of those just things that you, you like doing and you, you do need to be a little bit more careful when you're lighting it. You can end up with sort of a soccer ball size flame nice. in front of you if you're not careful with how you do it. That doesn't sound um, – so uh, do it sounds a the, bit of a contradiction <laughs> for safety, Ben. Don't do it in your <laughs> vestibule of your, um, of your tent, your tent yeah. And then, of course, um, metho, which is – like the classic metho stove is the trangia, trangia. right? Uh, trangia, trangia, someone's going to jump in. Trangia, and so this is trangia, so yeah. Pretty much unchanged since like the dawn of time. Yeah, I was going to say cavemen were probably using them yeah. and they would be exactly the same as they are now. I think I saw a video recently comparing a super old one with a new one and there mm. were very marginal differences. Yeah. Um, and same. I guess that says something, doesn't it? 
because how many works. other products can you think of? And I mean, um, there'll probably be hundreds of people in the comments being like, oh, this. But um, <laughs> off the top of my head at the moment, how many other products can you think of that have literally for like 50 plus years been identical and not changed and still get asked after on a daily basis? Just Vegemite, I think. Is probably yeah, veg- <laughs> <laughs> yes. But no, the change here, um, using metho, it's not as volatile a fuel, so it's much mm. safer to carry it. Um, you, you don't have to worry so much about leaving it in the sun and those sort of things. And the flame itself is much softer, so you light mm. it, you don't end up with that sockable flame, a uh, size ball of flame uh, while you're trying to light it. <clears throat> the downside is that it takes a little bit longer to boil, yeah. so you need to be more conscious of the wind protection. But it's all built into From the system. From an efficiency perspective, though, apparently it's like only about 30 mils. Like depending on the unit that you're using, apparently it can only it, – it can be like 30 mils of – of a liquid fuel to boil anywhere between one to one and a half litres of fuel, of water. I mean, it might take a while, yeah. but we're talking like just a bit more than a tablespoon. Yeah. So, and this this is where my argument for liquid fuel comes into play again that I really like, that I can really work out just how much I need for each trip. Yeah. Camping and hiking. I know what I'm going to cook. I know roughly how many meals I need per day. I get a bottle that takes that plus a bit of a buffer mm. and I'm not carrying anything more than I need to for the trip. And so because from my perspective, I've I've always just used gas for hiking and camping and um, not really ever done much with liquid fuel apart from obviously everyone at some point I'm sure has used a transia. Um, it just seems like too hard basket. Liquid fuel? The, like in terms of, yeah, and I don't know if that's just me or if it's just a sort of general perce- perception of it, but when you're talking about, you know, working out how much fuel you use <laughs> and, and how much you take and how much you carry and whatever, it's just a bit like, yeah, or I could just grab a gas canister that I know is going to cover me. Yeah, fair enough, and that's probably going to be. Like is it is it actually in the process? Is it actually involved? Well, Given, I mean, I'm going back a lot before yeah. kids, right? When I had yeah. time to like lay everything out in a spare room that wasn't used for anything else and weigh yeah. it all individually and put it in a spreadsheet. And then I had I a know. day to sit down and work out how many Don't meals have of kids, folks. fuel it took me to cook what I need for I my upcoming hiking trip. Whereas nowadays yeah. it's like I'm leaving tomorrow, I'm packing tonight. Yeah. A um, little bit different. Um, but so it is a process and I love doing it when I had the time and I still yeah. would love to do it now and I still do some of it. Yeah. Um, but. It's a slight change in, in mindset, I suppose, and it's a good argument for gas. I yeah. think that it is easy to just, just – it's much easier all round to use. You fill yeah. your gas bottle, you take it. If you're not going to be overly concerned about what you've got left, you're happy to take extra. Yeah. Setting it up is easy. Lighting it's easy. There's often built-in piezo ignition. Gas is no doubt mm. easier to use. Liquid yeah. fuel is a bit more mucking around. Um, but – Probably the traditional tragics in a few of us, like the process of. <laughs> of I don't working know if it's it tragic, and, but and yeah. The tragics are also a bit bulkier because mm. you are carrying um, supports and windshields within the system. It all packs mm-hmm. up inside, but it is a bulkier unit to fit inside your pack. But that generally includes the pots and the pans that you need to both cook and eat out of, yeah. and you can fit kettles inside it as well. So it probably weighs so like a little in, bit more. In theory, you could just take a transier and a fork and, you know, a collapsible yeah. mug and you're done yeah. and it would all fit. So it's like, yeah, it is bulkier, but you can pre- it's pretty much everything you need. And the only maintenance is the rubber O-ring in the burner. Yeah. It wears out over time. Yeah. Apart from that, they just keep on keeping on. Yeah. Uh, the liquid fuel stoves we mentioned before will require cleaning every now and then. The, the gas, will, uh, the jet will get blocked with a bit of soot if you're using dirty fuel. So a little bit more maintenance there. <clears throat> but you me. do have, um, and when you're using that spirit burner, you're actually just setting the metho on fire. It's just like this little dish of metho and you're just like, Fire. Pretty much, yeah. And whereas when you're using things like, um, you know, your Whisper Light or some of your other liquid fuel stoves, the the fuel's actually sort of being pressurised and aspirated, isn't it? Like yeah, gas, sort of. It's turning into a vapour. Yeah. yeah. Which sort of happens in the transier as well. It heats up and then it turns into vapour and it goes from like this soft flame in the middle to blue like yeah. sort of flames on the side. Mm. Um, another, a cool version of that, have you ever heard of the penny stove? The penny stove. Penny stove, yeah. No. It's a homemade stove, basically out of an aluminium can and you're basically Yeah, I'm making just thinking about um, Kate. Kate made a beer, okay, a beer up. can stove. That would be the same, same sort of thing. Yeah. 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 
So you, you just drill holes and, and you're basically creating a similar style burner to the transier burner yep. out of an aluminium can. So it weighs nothing. You just need to add a little support and some windshields yeah. and stuff to it. So have a check it like Google Penny Stove. This, penny Stove. I think I saw RAI had a video on how to, how to make one. Yeah. But yeah, all good fun. And that just runs off metho. And because, once again, metho is not so volatile, it's still flammable. Yeah. But not as dangerous to play with as shellite, which is more in the realms of unleaded fuel, Actual petrol, which is quite yeah. volatile. But so I guess with your um, – if you're having a liquid fuel stove, it you carry it in – an aluminium fuel bottle or a plastic fuel bottle like Trangis bottles of uh, um, plastic. I think MSRs are aluminium. Um, yep. So uh, transient um, metho, you can just take in polyethylene bottles like HDP bottles. Yep. But shellite, um, I'm pretty sure you need to take either a pot, uh, not polyprop, but like a, or the bottles they come in are like pet style plastics yeah. or a, um, more like an actual fuel can, like an aluminium fuel can that can handle a bit of pressure. Yeah, and it's got um, it's like a different thickness and it's got different seals in it too yep. apparently. Because it will pressure Than a normal us. drink bottle. Yep. Um, and now this is uh, – having not used liquid fuel before, I didn't actually know that this was a thing and I think it's sort of a bit cool. But apparently you can add up to 30% water to your fuel and – have it still operate your stove. So if hypothetically you're like Benji and you've sat at home and you've done all your calculations but you got a number in the wrong column and you're a bit short, you can add up to 30% volume of water to the fuel and it would still work. I think that's true of metho. I don't – and it would be interesting to see what – the, you know, the scientists or the yeah, petrochemical yeah. engineers in our, in our group, assuming yeah. that there would be some might say, but I don't think that would work with shellite. Okay. I don't know if I'd want to be putting water in a shellite, a, a system designed for shellite. You might end up with rust issues, but metho in a transier burner, which is a brass burner. Yep. I'm, I have heard that too. You add a bit of water to extend the, okay. the, the usage So potentially metho, not a hundred percent sure with liquid fuel. Yeah, because obviously I, that gives you a bit of flexibility that you don't have with gas. If you're like, oh, run out of gas, it's like too yeah. bad, so sad. Okay, something I knew of with metho, but yeah, I'd have to de fact check the uh, the shellite side of it. So don't try that. Don't try it at home, someone folks. Else has fact checked it. We don't recommend it. But yeah, so, um, so cross, the, it, the MSR Whisper Light they they also do like a dragonfly. And yep. I think they do a whole range of different versions and I think they really do. I mean, you talk about the pocket rocket in the gas in terms of being like a, a mainstay staple hiking stove. But I, whenever I think of liquid fuel hiking stoves um, or sort of any sort of expedition or adventure-based liquid fuel stoves, it's like MSR. Yeah. So they're not – so the, the Dragonfly and there was also an old one XGK from memory. I don't think it's made anymore. It's not. I know the one you mean. Yep. Apparently um, it's It looks not, a bit yeah. like a rocket. Um, the, so the Whisper Light isn't great for simmer. The, the dial between full bore and off is very fine. So yeah. I've always used it mainly for um, boiling water. Yep. And if I'm cooking, I'm kind of holding a pot up above the flame a little uh, bit. Right, or it's I a see. very fine dial to get it down yep. okay. before it goes off. Um, so they are designed for extreme environments more so because you're putting that pressure into the canister. So the Dragonfly yeah. is a bigger stove. I haven't, I can't recall. I think it was the XGK, the old one, but I reckon the Dragonfly, even the Whisper Light's quite noisy. They make a fair bit of noise, but they do sound really noisy, but they're designed just to yeah. melt ice, boil water quickly in extreme environments. That's yeah. kind of, you know, mountain safety, re uh, mountain safety rescues, MSRs. They're um, probably also a really good option for if you're, Potentially, I mean, in Australia, maybe this style of um, trip isn't as common as it might be in some other countries, but where you sort of trek into a location and you have a base camp and then you spend the day then sort of doing your day trips or whether or not you are climbing or, you know, you're going to do some skiing or whatever, but you have a remote base camp. In those situations, those stoves are really great because you yep. you're having potentially a larger group of people to cook with and yeah. larger volumes of food and things like that. And those stoves are going to cope a lot better than um, your smaller gas burners. 
I just had to fact check myself there. I said mountain mm. safety rescue, it was mountain safety research. research. I knew that wasn't right. Um, but yeah, you're right. The dragonfly, more for group cooking. It's got bigger supports, put a bigger pot on there so you can yeah. build a heap of ice for a heap of people. Yeah. There are other brands. Um, we don't obviously don't carry them all at Stoey's, mm. but um, Optimus is another brand that do yep. stoves that kind of same, same, but different. Yeah. Um, all really good stoves. I just Primus the, do them do them as well, Primus but as well, like yeah. Primus is one of those brands where companion brands, for example, they used to be known as Primus, but there is another brand called Primus which is different to that Primus. It was there was and a, it's like yeah. it's I think it's American or Japanese based or something, but it's like a lot more high end, technical lightweight. We did have um, a Primus here in Australia that was more general camping, but they do also do, yeah, a range yeah. of quite technical stuff. So, um, um, But they do some good liquid fuel stoves as yeah, well. Yeah. And, and they I mean, all do much the same thing. You probably, you could research till the yeah. cows come home about which one's best. It's probably more which one's best for you. Which yeah, one you which one's best for you yeah. for sure. Um, Where are we up? So we've jumped around in our notes here. So we have sure. a bit. So um, I guess the only real things to add to that um, – we haven't talked about crossover between camping and hiking much. Yeah, so like there's crossover I things like, for example, Coleman um, do a, a stove called a Sportster or a 533, which is a dual fuel one. And I it's reckon. literally – now everyone, just so everyone knows, apparently Coleman's dual fuel range is not discontinued. Their manufacturer that they had just can no longer manufacture them. So for the last, you know, 18 months, two years or whatever, they've been looking f- to ha- find a new partnership with a manufacturer who it's can produce off. them consistently yeah. and regularly. So it's not it's not like they're gone forever. I think it just we seems hope. to be one <laughs> of those things where from Coleman's perspective anyway, it's just a matter of finding um, someone who can consistently yeah. supply that stuff. We, but we hope anyway. We hope, that's, yeah. Because um, there's a lot of call for them still. A lot yeah. of call. And they did, they were away for ages and then they came back and it was so great and now they're away again. But yeah. um they're the sort of yeah, it's like a sports or a five three three. Like Brett had one, I reckon, and I'm co- I'm pretty Co- sure Coralie, Coralie who I think you know triggered two. this episode. Yeah. Um, she's yeah. got one too. Yep. Um, but essentially, it's like similar to the butane gas canisters, but a lot larger. And you have your fuel in, and then you do your little manual pump and you prime it, and it's just a single burner on the top. They're probably a bit big for hiking. Like I personally heavy, yeah. wouldn't wouldn't take one hiking. Um, it's essentially got a 230-gram canister on the bottom, but it's a much heavier gauge canister and you can't take it off. Yeah. So it's it's a bulky version of the pocket rocket or the Ferna that we talked about Yeah, before. that's all connected. But you could use it for hiking, I suppose, if you wanted. It's probably yeah. more suited for ultra lightweight camping. Yeah, it's say. like if you if you were someone who did compact or lightweight camping and that's what you had but you also wanted to go hiking, you could probably get away with it in a pinch. But if you're someone who's deciding that you're going to be more invested in your hiking or you're going to, you know, be doing things where um, pack size is more of a consideration or weight, it's probably not going to be right. No. But in a pinch it could could be used as a crossover. I think that car camping, I, I don't even, I don't recall mentioning it in a I don't know compact if we did. camping, car camping episode, but it probably is a really good option for that compact car camper, particularly if you're not a big family. If it was just myself and my wife, when I was buying a stove, I probably would have got that mm-hmm. because I'm cooking for a family. I need yeah. two burners and, and the, the powerhouse is what I went for. Yeah. Yep. Now, there's not. This is probably um, a little section at the back end of the episode that isn't really hiking specific, but it is just going on from that compact stove discussion that we had in the last episode. Um, things like the companion single burner, which is literally like the size of not quite a dinner plate, maybe a little bit smaller, and it's just a burner like a saucer, and it just screws straight onto the top of a gas bottle. So these are LPG gas bottles. LPG so this gas is, bottles. This You're is definitely not, not, not taking hiking, hiking. Compact car camping. Yep. yep. Compact car camping or sort of base camp things. If you want to, most of your time, you're not going to be at camp. Maybe you want to go and do an overnight hike away from camp, but you've got like a little base camp thing set up, but you don't want to carry like a whole yep. a hock of stuff for yeah. setting up a, a proper, proper camp. Um, they're a good option. This next one has been surprisingly popular. We we mm. sell quite a few of them, but they're not cheap. But obviously, they're, I, I'm not, have you used one? I have not used one. I have really wanted to use one yeah. and I have wanted to get one 
for the cool factor, but just can't justify it, obviously. Well, we've got to tell people what we're but talking yeah, about. Yeah, the Jetboard Genesis. Jetboard Genesis. We've yeah. mentioned it a few times in the podcast already, so don't super want to, you know, rehash old ground. But, um, again, they're a, a very sort of compact option. Now, I have seen in some of Jetboil's material using it or the half gen as a carry-in, carry-out camp stove. So not necessarily hiking per se, but again, one of those, I'm going to carry this into a base camp and carry it out again. So it's not beyond the realms of possibility that you would chuck that in your backpack and chuff off with it Um, because they can run off those small butane canisters. Mm. They don't require you to carry an LPG or a larger propane canister or anything like that. Um, If you've got a big group and you're sharing the load, someone else has got the tent and you've got space in yours, like I'm talking big group, you're probably talking yeah, like four to six plus Four to six people. people. Someone might have a tent, someone might have the pot, someone might have a stove. Yeah, easy. Probably rather than you all taking individual stoves, yep. one person could take this cooking system and yep. you're good to go. Everyone just brings a plate or a bowl or something to, to eat out of. Yeah, definitely. Um, and but, you can use like much larger pots and all sorts of things. Yeah. Yep. So if you're base camp hiking, have a look at that because it's a pretty cool system. Yeah. The other one that I want to mention, which is new, that we haven't talked about before, is the Dometic uh, Safari. Caddick Safari Chef. Okay. They've got funny names, haven't they? They do have funny names. That was probably the most normal out of all of the Dometic products. um, So, you know, similar, I guess, to when Dometic um, took over running Waco. And so it was Dometic Waco for a while. Now it's just fully Dometic fridges. They've done the same with this stove, a German stove company. I'm pretty sure it's German called Caddick, C-A-D-A-C. Um, and so now it's Dometic Caddick, but I'm assuming in a year or two's time, as per um, what we saw with Waco, it will just become Dometic. So yeah. at the moment it's, you know, Dometic Caddick Safari Chef 30. Um, now that it's pretty cool. It essentially just packs up into – Something that's sort of like a basketball, I guess, in size, yeah. but ov- obviously more like dish shape, not a round ball shape. But it's – I can only really describe it as it being a miniature Weber. Okay. And so it's got a – um, you know, it's got your big single burner and it's got a wind shroud in it and it's got a, um, a grill plate and a hot plate and you can use it to put different pots and frying pans on and you can use the the lid, you can use that as a frying pan as well. Um, and that ha- comes with an optional hose that you can get to run it off those butane propane hiking oh, okay. canisters, right? Yeah. So you don't necessarily have to carry a huge big LPG bottle or refillable gas bottle with you. So sorry, it runs off like the Lindell valve. Yeah, the Lindell B188. And is it normally run off Lindel. LPG? So you can run it off LPG. Or oh. you can run it off. Um, really? The little two, resealable? Yeah, it's like wow. a double adapter and you just screw two of those on. Well, that's pretty cool. Which is really cool because it makes it a lot more portable without having to lug a gas bottle around, which mm. for a lot of people is a limitation. But, um, you know, it is sort of, I guess it is reasonably heavy, but it is something that is worth considering if you're not, if, even if you are having to carry it or even if you're doing something like, you know, a kayaking or a canoe trip or something mm. or um, potentially bike packing it would be a bit large, but any of those sort of lightweight adventures where you do need to carry a cooking system, it wouldn't be too much of a stretch to a potentially cr- take that. I can see a use case for that if you do a lot of driving to a location, and this is something I've done previously before yeah. kids once again, you take your car to a certain point, you can't take the car any further, you pack your bags and yeah. you walk. Rather than taking an LPG bottle and the isobutane canisters, that stove uses the same gas, right? Yeah. So you just have to – you've got your bigger stove in your car for when yep. you're in base camp, all yep. the cars there. Mm-hmm. Take the same canisters, use your little hiking stove for a few days out on the trail, come back and you've got your big stove again. So Definitely. that's pretty cool. I've never seen a stove that can – Me either, and it's pretty, pretty awesome. unique. Um, and it's and it's very cool because it does have – again, it does have like the, that double adapter end, mm. so you're not just screwing one in, you're screwing two in. So I guess the Genesis, who that does also use those little miniature canisters, similar sort of thing to what you're saying. You can just take one – one fuel source for a bigger stove and a smaller hiking stove, depending on the different stages of what you're doing in your trip, you can do it with the Dometic as well. Are you referring to the isobutane propane canisters or the LPG, like the Coleman ones? I'm not referring to the Coleman propane canisters. I'm referring to the actual- Little upright, 230, yeah, 450 gram. Yeah, the, oh, right. the B188 
lingual okay. valve canisters, like right. the traditional hiking gas canister. Yeah, cool. Yeah. There you go. Very cool. So, yeah, probably too heavy for camping. Yes. Uh, for hiking, sorry, but good for lightweight camping or mixed adventures. Like I don't, I don't know about you um, and an example in, I guess, in South Australia is if you just like decide maybe you might want to take a Friday off or a Monday off and you drive up to um, Alligator Gorge or Manbury Creek or whatever, R- Mount Remarkable, and just park there and stay the night. The next morning you just go for it and do Alligator Gorge, which is, mm. you know, like a one-night overhike loop, come back, mm-hmm. maybe stay another night there at camp and drive back to town. It's it's one of those situations where, like you say, you've got a nice little cooking system for camp and you've got your little hiking stove. Don't have one, to worry just about one type of gas. One type of yeah. Yeah, nice. So a couple of other styles, co- companion propane cookers, um, they, you've just, we just mentioned those because you can use a com- more compact the, the, and that's the LPG, the compact yeah. LPG canisters. Yeah. And, and the also lunch your lunchbox style, butane ones, which um, uh, we mentioned yeah. before, don't we? And we've gone, yeah, we're not, not going to double up on those too much, but just thought it might be worth chucking in on the end there if you're someone who's considering more lighter weight stoves for, um, you know, hybrid hiking, camping adventures or It's quite a big like topic, lightweight stoves, and if you jump on a lightweight hiking forum, you'll mm. get all sorts of homemade stoves out of lightweight yeah. titaniums, um, little things that fold into a triangle that you can put a burner in, really, really simple foolproof stoves. Yeah. It's quite endless and if you want to go down that path, you could spend a lot of time researching what's the best and I guarantee you'll probably, guarantee you'll probably, that's guarantee a bit of a, you'll that's, probably. that contradicts yourself, doesn't it? Um, I you, guarantee that you might. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'll probably end up with yeah. multiple stoves because no matter how you look at it, the next one's, you know, that yeah. grass is a bit greener over there and you end up. With a box full of yeah, if you gear follow, um, I know always going to be mentioned Kate before with her beer stove, and we've had her on the podcast before. So if you're someone who's follows her or watches her videos or follows her on socials, she's been going through. Um, you're having some fun lately trying to find out ultralight stoves and ultralight ways of cooking and making you know little DIY options. So um, some of her stuff's pretty fun. It's cool. cool. All right, that was good. I, we went with we, well, we covered the topic pretty well. I think I, yeah, we weren't I we quite did. sure. There we go. Yeah. It's, again, it's one of those things where I thought it would be a short episode and it wasn't. And then other times where we think, man, this can be long and it's not. So. Who knows? We have no idea. We have no Start idea. talking. Fly by the seat of our pants. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching uh, the latest episode of the Snowy's Camping Show. As we mentioned before, subscribe via your favorite app, YouTube, and jump in on the conversation on the Snowy's Camping Banter Facebook group where we will be discussing these things Soon after publish, I'd say. Um, also, the we do have a community on Facebook too. For those not on uh, on the YouTube, on YouTube, sorry. yeah. For those not on Facebook, um, we try and post more in the YouTube community too. Cool. That's it. Thanks. See have you a next good time. Week. Bye. Bye.